Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Leadership Void Podcast. I'm Enrique with my co-host, Vince, to bring you the best in our veteran, military spouse, and first responder community. And Vince will introduce today's guest. Oh, absolutely. Thanks, Enrique. You know, this is the end of the year. What a better way to end with this gentleman. His last and his first name actually starts with a Z, the last letter of the alphabet. So we're going to finish off with Zach Viscomi. He is the president of Celebrity Branding Agency in the greater Philadelphia area. Listen, he's been on all major networks, been on Forbes, been on Wall Street Journal, USA. He's been everywhere. He's doing some great things. Talk about personal branding, folks. But before he dives in, let us know a little bit more about this young man. Zach, tell us a little bit about you. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks, guys, for having me on here. I mean, I'm I'm really excited. And, uh, you know, I know you guys have a passion for the veteran community. I, as a veteran myself, you know, do as well. And so uh, I love what you guys are doing. And, and thanks again for having me on. So um, look, I can give you I can give you the short version of this story. Um, and, uh, and I'll do that. So I joined the military uh, Marine Corps back in 2005. I got out in 2012. Um, and, uh, and I was deployed in 2009 and, uh, my story in my life, uh, was, um, you know, there's just a lot of different traumas and all sorts of things leading up to it and then through it and afterwards and so on. And so my journey has been one where, uh, I've always been very ashamed of my story, right? I was, I didn't want to share it. I didn't want to tell people and I was embarrassed, right? Because I was deployed and I didn't get shot and I didn't shoot anybody. And we can talk some more about the importance of stories when we get into personal branding and stuff. But I found for myself that as I started to tell my story and, and own it and take ownership of it, uh, that opportunity started opening up for me. Um, and so that was the that was the beginning journey of me to uh, to really getting involved with celebrity branding agency first as just a, a low level employee with really out of without a position to now, you know, running the entire company and, and being the visionary who's driving it forward. So, um, you know, I'm a father and a husband, I've got three amazing kids that are six and under. And so uh, really, everything I do is is just to, uh, to, to give them a better life and to help more people as best I can. Well, I tell you, you bring up a point that a lot of us are affected with. How do we relate our story in the military to the community, right? That either has no uh, information to go by or has some and maybe misinformation, but we'll get into the branding piece here after you tell us a little bit more about Celebrity Branding Agency. Yeah, yeah. So Celebrity Branding Agency was founded by uh, who's the CEO and, and owner now Nick Nanton and his business partner JW Dix, who's uh, he's a, we always say now he's out there enjoying his uh, his retirement home. He earned it. So uh, so it was his mentor over the years. And so Nick started the company. Um, really, he got his start in the entertainment industry. Nick did. So he was a, a top billing entertainment lawyer. Uh, he's got three golden records. He still writes songs for for Nashville and and uh, different record labels and stuff. Um, but um, it wasn't it wasn't moving as quickly as he wanted it to. And so that was when Jack was just like, "Look, like, why don't you take everything that you're doing and then do this for business owners instead? Because there's nobody like building credibility and doing like publicist type work in the way that you're doing it for these artists." Um, and so that was the 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 birth of celebrity branding agency. Um, and so really fundamentally, what we do is we help entrepreneurs and business owners uh, really be able to to leverage their personal brands through marketing and PR and different things to to help grow their business, build trust in the marketplace. Uh, and what we say is, um, as our mission is to empower people to live lives of joyful impact and significance. Um, so in other words, we just want to help people help more people. Uh, and so we're, we're, we work with entrepreneurs who, you know, have a passion for success, but know that their success is directly tied to, uh, the success of the others around them. Um, so yeah, we do that through a lot of different ways, <laughs> um, you know, best-selling books, TV shows, you know, big print there's, I don't know if they'll be able to see anything, but I got some of the things, uh, you know, plaqued on the back here that I've done as well. So, um, yeah. And, and honestly, uh, everything that we do has to at least be 50% fun. So we, we throw like, you know, fun events, we bring a lot of people together, top thought leaders. Um, and so we just, we like having a good time. We like to work hard and, and play hard too. So that's all a part of, of who we are and what we do. I love it. And then 50% fun. Well, who else can ask for more right there, right? There? I love <laughs> right? Uh, 
And going back to a couple of things here, right? Going back to the personal branding of military, any thoughts or pearls of wisdom on that? And also challenges or lessons now that you're the president and visionary of running this agency, anything you'd like to share in that arena as well? Yeah, great question, Vince. So um, two parts I heard there. The first one is just personal branding for for military people. Um, look, I'll, I'll say this because it's true for everybody and especially true for military people. When I talk about a brand, a brand is just a story. So branding is storytelling and a great brand is a story that others share for you, right? So when we were talking about people being the face of their business, when, when they are the go-to for the goods and services and things like that, um, your brand is, is that. Whereas like you look at McDonald's or some other places, their brand is the experience that somebody has in the restaurant, no matter where they are in the world, right? So uh, for you, that experience is is you interacting with that client. And so your brand and how you build trust with them is is by telling your story. And that's where the part that comes in with, you know, with veterans, right? So I tell this story a lot. I believe um, uh, Kenny Thomas, uh, I believe, is the one who who said this. And we've uh, we actually just finished a book with him. He's the he was the lead ranger in um, one of the lead rangers, obviously, in the Battle of Mogadishu. So Black Hawk Down everything like that he was you know he was in that um it was a consultant for the movie and and all those sorts of things um and so we were talking with him uh nick was actually talking with him and, and he said you know what nick like i just i really don't have a story and nick was like what w what are you talking about right and and i've had this conversation i just talked with uh kenny back in september about this very thing um and he he believed even though that there was a movie made off of the experience that he lived in the military he believed that he didn't have a story that others wanted to hear. And so I share that for a number of different reasons. One, no matter what you've been through in your life, um, obstacles you've overcome, wins and successes that you had, like your unique experiences are different than anybody else's. And, and it's your unique experiences and your skill set and what you know that really qualifies you to not only serve your ideal client, but to bring value to a company, to, to show up for your family, to do all those things. And, and it starts with knowing that you have a story worth sharing. And so when I asked uh, Kenny, like, why do, why do you feel like you didn't have a story worth sharing? He's like, why well, I made it home. And he was like, and I was like, interesting. Um, you know, if you backpedal that, and as I was thinking about my own life, my own experience of being deployed and other people that I've talked to, it's true of everybody across the board. You have people that join the military that never deployed and then feel like they didn't do their job. You got people that deployed, but didn't see action felt like they, you know, they're less than you have people who saw action, but you know, didn't lose a limb or get a purple heart or a bronze star or something like that. And it just goes up and up and up. And then you get to the person who gave their ultimate sacrifice for their country and they can't share their story anymore. Right. And so it's like, it's like, no matter where you are, what you've been through, the traumas that you faced or didn't face, um, you know, that is all a part of your story and who you are. And there's no reason to be ashamed of that. And sharing it is really important. And that's so powerful. You know, the other day I spoke to a person that served as a chaplain uh, assistant um, in the Navy, but never, ever was on a ship. And your, and your commentary right now just reminds me of him. When I was talking to him, he had a ship behind him. And I said, oh, hey, that's a comm ship. What, what ship was that? Because there's several. And it wasn't a ship that he was on. But he felt that he had to put this out to identify with the audience. And I was like, whoa, but what about you? And so you bring up a great point. Uh, sometimes we try to mask things with other things when we actually have a story ourselves. And so, uh, you know, you, you guys are doing great work. You started with a, a, a great, uh, established, uh, brand you're helping other people build their brand. So what's on the horizon for celebrity branding agency? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. I'm glad you asked. Cause I'm, I'm super excited for it. Um, you know, and just that, the now that the vision is kind of in my hands, I, I love the agency. I, I love what we do. I love helping people. Um, and, and so now as I'm looking forward, it's like, what a great opportunity for us to, to become without sounding shallow, but like the Hollywood for entrepreneurs, 
Um, and really what I'm thinking is like, people just don't celebrate entrepreneurs. They don't celebrate, you know, that you think of Jeff Bezos or, or Elon Musk who are in the news all the time or Bill Gates and stuff. And, you know, Steve Jobs, right. Who started all this stuff out of their garage and, and those sorts of stories. And people think it's like, that's unattainable. Like I, I'm never going to do that. Um, if I could just get a piece of that pie, it'd be great. And the reality is, is that there's hundreds of thousands, if not probably millions of entrepreneurs, small to medium business owners that really make the world go round. I mean, we've worked with 4,000 clients now in over 70 different countries. So um, it's not just in the US, really entrepreneurs drive the economics in in countries all over the world. And, um, but no one, no one pays any mind to, to that. So um, yeah, so I, I just, I love sharing that vision. And like, I just want to bring I want to bring like-minded people together. Uh, and as I said earlier, you know, our, our biggest mission is really just to empower people to live these lives of joyful impact. And what, what I say that that means is like, you can live a, an extremely selfish life, right? Like it's a spectrum, but let's say you live an extremely selfish life. You're going to push people away. They're not going to want to be around you. Like maybe you'll get some success, but it's not going to go very far at some point. And then if you live a completely selfless life at your own expense, then you have the opposite problem where you're giving too much of yourself to other people. You're not taking care of yourself. And so there's this great balance right in the center. Um, and that's where that life of joyful impact is where, where you get to experience the success that you want. Um, however it is that you define success, whether it's more time with your family or making more money or whatever, but also you get there by helping other people do it. Um, and so we just want to, we want to share that. And then the more entrepreneurs that we get, who want to grow their businesses, who align with that, then those are the people we want to work with. Like, let's do it. Let's build your brands. Let's get you out there so you can help more people. And then we have an exponential effect and we, we can do that around the world. I totally love your mission and what you all are doing because I totally say this, you know, the Hollywood uh, lifestyle for the entrepreneurs is needed. And one thing we're doing, we're showcasing them in our leadership void podcast. Those are the veteran and military first responder community. So, uh, yes, they need to be showcased. They need to show that they are stimulating the economy and doing some great things, not only in their uh, um, community, but for themselves and for their children as well. So community is always the key, but they are doing great things. Celebrity branding is doing great things. At the helm is this visionary, this individual, the president, uh, Marine. Uh, yep. And let's know, Semper what do five. you do? <laughs> Semper Fi, right? <laughs> What do you do to sharpen your saw to keep up with your leadership development uh, in the current state? Yeah, great, great question. And this is uh, this is an ongoing journey for me, right? So it started with just dealing with the PTSD that was in my life um, and, and getting a handle on that. Um, but really, uh, my day-to-day -day practice right now is it's a mind-body-spirit type of practice. So I, I don't do it every morning. I try really hard, but uh, let's be honest, I'm human. So, um, but I do have a, I do have a, a routine every morning that I do. It takes about 20 minutes, um, whether I it's before I go to the gym or afterwards, um, I try to get my workout in. Uh, but I, I wake up, um, I do what I need to do in the morning to get started, but then I'll, uh, I'll put on just some meditation music and just do some breathing and like get centered with myself. Right. Um, and then I'll do some, you know, just quick journaling and putting things down on paper. Um, and then I do like some yoga or stretching and then I'll, I'll head to the gym, like I said, or I'll, I'll do that afterwards. And so I just have this practice of, of trying now to regulate my nervous system that when I come back and make breakfast for the kids, and then when I go to work and when I'm, I'm moving on with my life that I'm, I'm doing it intentionally and not out of a reactivity standpoint, which is, you know, when you're in stress all the time, that's, that's how you react. And that's how I was living. Um, and so, yeah, I, I call that the, it, it's kind of this, uh, the constant pursuit of excellence. I don't ever think I'm going to be excellent at anything, right. And it because there's always opportunity to learn and grow. Um, and so I hired a coach, a personal, personal coach, uh, about a month and a half ago who's kind of gotten me on this routine and stuff. And so I'm constantly looking for ways and, and new strategies, but that's been probably the most impactful and helpful routine that I've had. Um, and it only takes 20 minutes. So I love it. <laughs> and, and the best 20 minutes that you'll probably spend that day, yeah. <laughs> right? Because, uh, stabilizing yourself will give everyone else you meet that day stability. 
And uh, that's so important. So good on you, brother, for, for doing that and getting a coach. Uh, so important folks, <laughs> you, you need to consider that if you're not all the way there, uh, to help you out when you was starting the conversation, you, you said, Hey, I started, you know, just like a, a low level employee here. And now, you know, I, I got the president and, and that's beautiful to hear. I, I love those success stories because, you know, if it happened to you, it could happen for me. And it's always giving someone encouragement. But when you was that low level employee, when you mm -hmm. was that first year Marine, I, I know you got some advice. I know you got some things that uh, helped you uh, along uh, that maybe today will help another emerging leader. If you would share that with us. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I can think of a couple of things that I took with me, um, you know, both from the military and, and just being early on. And um, so from the military, I would say uh, one of my mentors there um, shared with me, you know, kind of his definition of leadership, which I'm sure they got from somewhere else and from somewhere else too. Um, and it, it was basically that you, as a leader, you, you always take the blame and never take the credit. And, and there's been so many variations since then of, of hearing that. Right. But that's always stuck with me that in every situation, if I'm leading a team of people, um, and something goes wrong, then, then that's on me, right? As a leader, I should have prepared them. If, if they weren't, you know, we'll learn from it, but that's on me. I'll take that responsibility. Right. But then when there's a success and they win, then, then it's all the team's congratulations. Like that wasn't me. That was all them. Like without them, it wouldn't have happened. Right. And so there's, there's no matter what level you're on, when you show your, the people under you, that level of respect um, I think that that really goes a long way. Um, and the second part of that was um, never, never see anything as below you. So if, if you were going to ask somebody to do it, you should be willing to do it yourself too, or have at least done it before um, and then show them how to do it. So it's like just that level of humility um, that if you really want to lead, it's being a, a, a servant leader um, where you're there to, to serve them. And then on the professional side, actually, the the best piece of advice that I got from Nick um, very early on as I started jumping into it, he just said, I was like, look, I don't I don't know sales. I don't know. Like this is this is really the first jump for me into into a career. Like, what what do I do? Um, and he's like, look, all you have to do is is be yourself and have like be authentic um, and have good conversations with people and and the rest will fall into place. Um, and I, I've, I've taken that to heart and that's all I try to do now is it's just have good conversations with people and see where that leads. I'm chills goosebumps, brother. You know, <laughs> he gave you that runway, right? He gave yeah. you the opportunity to empower you. Just be yourself, be authentic. That's amazing to hear. I'm glad you're passing that on. Great advice. Also the fact that if failure occurs, it's on the leader and if success, it's for the team and empowering them as well. So great advice you're giving them. Now, Zach, want to understand memorable leadership aha moments. Would you have any pros that you love to share with our audience today? Yeah. So, um, you, I feel like people who are born for leadership know that they were born for leadership. Right. And I think a lot of people feel like, unless you're born for leadership, you can't be a good leader. Um, I remember when I was, um, I was in an after school care program in like fourth or fifth grade. My mom was working single mom. So, so we had to stay after, you know, once school was over until she was done working. And, uh, and in the summer we went to this new program, you know, that was during the day. And I, I overheard after our first day there, like the, one of the counselors or whoever telling my mom, like, yeah, Zach and Rachel were great. They seemed to, to get in, you know, I could definitely tell that Zach's a follower. Like he just sort of followed the other kids around and just whatever. Right. Like, and, and I, that stuck with me. Cause I was like, Oh, that's weird. Like I never would have thought of, I'm eight years old. Right. But I'm like, Oh, that's kind of weird. I never would have thought of that. Um, and, and then in every position work position and otherwise that I've ever had, I've always been put into a leadership position, which I thought was really interesting. Um, and, and I have no idea why, but, <laughs> but the aha moment that I had since that story always sticks with me is, leaders, leaders aren't always born, uh, leaders are made. 
Um, I think leaders are people who, despite the fear or anxiety or whatever, are the ones who are willing to step up and put themselves out there to try to help other people. And, and to me, that's what a true leader is. And uh, and as long as I continue to do that, I believe no matter what position or, or where I am, that I'm being a leader. Well, I've always said that the best leaders have been the greatest followers. Mm. And you have to uh, you, you you put the work in. That's what happened. <laughs> you put the work in early and you got the uh, positions later. And so it, it's always funny to see how that uh, story develops in each and every one of the, the guests that we have and, and the folks that we talk to. Um, challenges, mm. change is something that we struggle with on an individual basis. Organizationally, we we struggle with it. As a world, we struggle with it. So what certain kind of strategies do you implement or do you have to uh, get you ready for those or get you through those times? Mm. Yeah, that's a that's a great question. And, and I would say a, a constant struggle, right? Um, I would say that there's probably two things um, that I find the most important whenever you're dealing with conflict, with challenges, with change that you always have to keep in mind. Um, that is, um, I think I can make it even like three, it's three C's maybe. Let's see if I can do it. But it's it's communication. Uh, nope, I can't do it. So it's communication, it's empathy, uh, and it's communication. <laughs> so um, communication, just even in, in any situation is is really difficult. Um, and it's it's just one of those things that are hard. But I think with with change, with challenge, with conflict, one of the biggest things is is just uncertainty. Like people are used to it. They like routines. Um, when you get out of a routine, it creates this level of uncertainty. Like, am I going to be able to do the new thing? Um, you know, is, is this change going to affect me personally, professionally, and otherwise? And so as long as you can communicate why the changes are happening, um, who the changes are going to be happening to and for, and then empathize with them and, and hear them out and give them the space to express their uncertainties and then communicate back that you heard them, uh, you know, here's why, here's what we can do to help. Here's what we can't do. And here's why, but just keeping that, that channel of communication open and, and being understanding that change is difficult for people, um, I think is really the best strategy in, in any situation. I love it. And, you know, one thing we always heard was, you know, that communication is really listen to understand and not to respond and mm. don't take it personally because some leaders do at times it's, that's, that's a blow to them, but no, they just want to invest uh, and go ahead and vent sometimes, but you have to understand that they also are struggling. They also have families and they're looking for you for leadership. So be empathetic, as you mentioned, right? And communicate back. These changes are hard. You might not have all the answers. And if you say that, guess what? That's that's totally understandable and, and humanizing it as a leader. So love that, uh, that you're sharing those strategies for challenge and change. And we could go on and on, Zach, but uh, folks, this was a great opportunity to hear from this great president, great gentleman, great Marine, Zach Viscomi, and about celebrity branding agency. So for folks to want to get a hold of him or his company, how do they go about doing so? Yeah, so you can go right to the website, uh, celebritybrandingagency.com, um, or you could check out my own website at zachviscomi.com. Outstanding folks, and we're going to have that as part of the show notes and video so you can get a hold of Zach, the company. Hey, hire them. Get them to work your branding needs, your storytelling needs, and I'm sure that they'll appreciate it. If you want to get a hold of us at the Leadership Void Podcast, the Leadership Void at gmail.com is where you'll send that correspondence. If you want to see a guest speaker or you want a topic covered, that deals with leadership, and then we'll curate that, and Vince and I will take care, make sure that uh, we answer that mail. But thank you, uh, Zach, for 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 joining us. Yep, and absolutely. Also, want to say one last thing: we're so grateful for our sponsor, Veterans Entrepreneurship Initiative (VEI), sponsoring the Leadership Void each and every time. And you know what? This is the end of the year. Happy New Year, everyone. 2021 is going to be over, but personal branding is important. So contact Celebrity Branding Agency or Zach. But Zach, it's all about you today. Thank you again. Happy New Year and best of luck in the future.
Yeah. Thank you, Vince. Thank you, Enrique. I mean, this was, uh, this was great and you guys are awesome. So thanks so much for what you're doing and for having me on your show. 